Hello guys, it's Mashtag here. Today I want to show you how to set RetroArch as your default front end for the RG350. Setting RetroArch as your default front end means that the device directly starts into RetroArch right after it has booted up. And it's a clean start into RetroArch since your default menu is not being run in the background. If you don't feel comfortable with it, I will also show you how to revert this change. So if you guys are ready, just grab your RG350 and let's get started. Alright, first of all, I expect you guys have RetroArch installed already on your RG350. If you don't have, just follow my link in the video description where I show you how to install RetroArch and do some basic setup on it. So as you have RetroArch installed, the next step is to put a little script on your RG350 that does the job for us. Therefore, I wrote a little script for you guys and put it on my Google Drive. I put the link into the video description and if you click on that link, it will take you to this folder on my Google Drive called Frontend. It contains two files, the actual script called frontend underscore start and a small readme file that explains the steps you have to do in text. Just for a backup, if you want to repeat it and you don't want to watch this video again. Alright, let's start downloading the actual script. Therefore, just navigate to the upper left corner and click on that download button. Wait until it's downloaded. Locate to your download folder. And there it is. That's the actual script we need to copy over to our RG350. To achieve this, I recommend you guys using WinSCP as your default data transfer tool. I also have a video where I show you guys how to set up WinSCP to make a data connection between your RG350 and your PC. So when you're connected to WinSCP, Navigate to a folder called Media Data Local Aspen. Depending on your system, it might already have a front end start script installed. And if that is the case, we want to make a backup of the existing script. So if you don't feel comfortable with RetroArch as your default front end, you can just revert the stuff we did here. So I'm going to rename mine to front end underscore start underscore original and just drag and drop the new script over to that folder. Alright, actually this is all we have to do. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Before I demonstrate it for you on my RG350, I want to show you the content of the front end start script. Therefore, just right click on it and select edit. It will open up the script and let me explain to you in a few easy words what's going on here. So in this line here, we're gonna check if RetroArch is installed. Only if RetroArch is installed, we try to run RetroArch and after RetroArch has quit, we're gonna start our default menu called gmenu2x. So in the other case, if RetroArch is not installed, let's say you accidentally removed it or you removed it on purpose, this script is going to check if gmenu x is installed to your system. So if that's the case, we're going to run gmenu x. And on the other hand, if neither RetroArch or gmenu x is installed, we're going to start up with our default menu called gmenu2x. So as you can see, I try to respect some corner cases, so in case you remove RetroArch or anything happens to the application, like you rename it, you will not end up in a black screen or something. Your RG350 will still start up with your default menu and you can repeat the step or correct the things that went wrong. Okay, the final step we have to do before we can test it is to give this script executable rights. To achieve this, we use our WinSCP connection to start a terminal. Just click on that small terminal symbol up there. 
And since we are already located in our media data local SBIN folder, we can directly type chmod whitespace plus x whitespace front end underscore start and hit enter. Now what this does is it gives this script executable rights so that the RG350 can execute it right after it has boot up. All right, now that we've installed the script and gave it executable rights, it's time to test if everything works fine. Go back to your RG350 and navigate to the settings section up there. Go over to the reboot button and confirm it by pressing A. Now the RG350 is going to reboot and if everything went right, it's going to start up right into RetroArch. And here we go. Everything worked fine. Our RG350 started right up into RetroArch and we can directly start playing our favorite games. Okay, so now let me show you what happens if you quit RetroArch. It will bring you back to your default menu. So I don't want you to lose anything, so I decide not to restart RetroArch as you quit it. Um, I decide to make the script starting your default menu again. So if you ever feel like you want to change something in your menu, just quit RetroArch. Go back to your menu. Do whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to copy some stuff with the Dingux commander or you want to watch a video um, or maybe just want to play one of your ported games here. Um, and for sure, you can always come back to emulators and just start RetroArch again. Um, and if you ever, if you ever um, want to quit it, um, it will it will start up in RetroArch for the next time you start your RG350 again. Alright guys, that's what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you liked that video. So if you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up for it. And if you like to see more videos like this, just subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day. I wish you happy gaming and see you in my next video. Bye.